So in the fall of 2015, a new and frankly astonishing discovery uh, was announced to the world. Uh, in a cave in South Africa called Rising Star Cave, hundreds of fossils had been discovered. And whereas some of the things like early Homo I mentioned um, are very fragmentary, and we're not entirely sure how to interpret them. Uh, with this new Naledi, uh, that isn't quite the case. Uh, with Naledi, we have lots of pieces, and we have multiple samples of each bone. So I've got uh, here on the table a couple of um, 3D printouts of scans of the bones. Uh, that I downloaded from scans of the original. I downloaded them off the internet. I sent them off and had them uh, 3D printed. Um, not very expensive, uh, easily done. So if you want to you know, show these sorts of things in your classroom, that's quite possible. So let me run through some of the things that we have here. This piece is uh, part of the back of the skull. So it's from this part of the head back here. And you can see this is an adult specimen, and it is quite small, really. Uh, not very large at all. Likewise, this specimen here is the side of a cranium. So this bone here, and you can see again, it's really tiny. You can also see some other traits. You can see prominent brow ridge right here. And then behind that brow ridge, there is a post-orbital constriction, as we've seen in other specimens uh, from the fossil record. The head, however, this is a little different than other things that we've seen in the fossil record. This one is much rounder uh, this way. Uh, other fossil forms that we've seen. They're much more flat, broad. Think Australopithecus um, africanus, for example. Uh, this guy is a lot more round, even though he is really small. I can fit my hand pretty, pretty comfortably around the front and all the way to the back of the uh, skull fragment. And this piece is a piece of the maxilla, which is this bone right here. Those are the teeth. Now, as I said, there's a lot of Homo naledi. So some of the problems that we have interpreting, for example, early Homo, we're not going to have those kinds of problems with Homo naledi because we've got multiple specimens of almost every bone in the human body, which is rather unique. It's a rather unique situation. Likewise, some of those bones were found articulated. In other words, it is as if uh, parts of the body had basically rotted and the bones were left there exactly where they were. There had been no disturbance, no mixing the bones around or anything like that, which in, in you know, looking at these apes and human creatures, that is extraordinarily unusual. So what was Homo naledi like? Well, let's look at some of the uh, more carefully preserved bones and try to see what we can find. Here you can see, uh, here on the left, is uh, a complete right hand. It's situated like that. Uh, right hand of Homo naledi. And over here, we have the complete left hand of a modern human being modern Homo sapiens. And you can see uh, right away that they're not the same size. Naledi here is substantially smaller than modern humans. Another way that they're similar, of course, is what appears to be a lot of dexterity. So Naledi presumably would have the ability to manipulate fine objects in much the same way as we do in the modern world. There is, however, one striking difference that the uh, researchers noted in their original analysis and is really, really obvious when you look at Naledi and compare it to the modern human hand. And that is 
the bones of the Naledi hand here are extremely curved. So if I grab this bone right here and hold that up, you can see that's pretty curvy. Let me grab the same one from the modern human hand and compare them. You can see that the Naledi hand, the bright white one there on the right, is really very different from the uh, sort of yellow bone on the left, which represents Homo sapiens. Now, another feature that's related to that curvy fingers is the shoulder blade. So here, in this um, model of a modern human skeleton, you can see here's the shoulder blade, the scapula. And you can see this part of the shoulder blade right here, this, this uh, part that sticks out, is flat. It uh, articulates here with the collarbone and it's an attachment point for some of the muscles that'll come down and um, meet up with our arm bone. And it's flat. It's basically um, even and parallel to the ground. In Homo naledi, that part, that bone right there, is much more angled upward. Also, what we find in naledi that's different is the ribs. So the rib cage in the modern uh, human here is essentially shaped like a barrel. It's, it's mostly as broad right up here as it is down here. But the ribs of Naledi seem to so show that it sort of comes to a point at the top. It's much more shaped like a pyramid. And all of those things together, the curvy fingers, the um, the angle here on the, the shoulder blade and the pyramid-shaped uh, rib cage indicates that Naledi might have been a climber. All of those features are really helpful if you go around with your arms up in the air, suspending your body from them, right? So if you're holding on to a limb, then having curved finger bones is really helpful to, for doing that. And in modern primates, the ones with the most curvy finger bones are the ones that use their arms a lot for moving around. Um, the shoulder blade here, you can see on our model, that process that sticks out is going to come and make for difficult time if you're going to hang your arms up. But if you have the process uh, angled at a different angle, then it's going to be much easier for you to hold your arms up. And same for the rib cage. If the rib cage is narrow on the top, then uh, it's much easier for you to um, hang by your arms. So all of those features taken together imply that Homo naledi was a climber, which is kind of surprising. That's not something that we see in modern people. So naledi is different. Now the foot, I didn't make a model of the foot. Mostly because the foot looks very, very similar to modern human feet. Um, I actually heard a lecture from one of the guys who is a foot expert and studied Homo naledi, and he was disappointed when he saw the pictures of the foot because it looks like a modern human foot. Uh, and so naledi is a real weird mix of characters. Very small head, right? So the head is tiny, uh, brain tiny. Uh, the hands, and the arms, and the shoulder blades seem to indicate that this guy could climb. Uh, and yet the feet and the legs uh, imply that he walked around on two legs. So, he's a strange one.